Welcome to the Holistic Psychiatry Podcast. I'm Courtney Brown Snyder, a physician and holistic adult and child psychiatrist. If you're getting this by newsletter, I'm joining you by video today. And I look forward to talking with you about zinc and how incredible zinc is and why it's so important when it comes to brain health. This episode is for educational purposes and not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment for either yourself or others, including but not limited to patients that you are treating if you're a practitioner. Please consult your own physician for any medical issues you may be having. The reason I wanted to talk about this and give a refresher and an update and also an introduction for those not familiar is because regularly I have people reaching out for consultations and treatment who have had extensive labs and probably expensive and had many functional medicine tests done and have not had their zinc levels checked. And if by chance they have had their zinc levels checked, it may not have been recognized as low. So those of us who are trained through the Walsh Research Institute use a range that is based on the work of Dr. William Walsh, who with the Research Institute looked at 30,000 plus people with brain-related symptoms and found that zinc, among a few other nutrient imbalances, were commonly showing up in those with brain-related symptoms. So the range that we use is much tighter and we consider it an optimal range. And so someone could have a normal zinc level according to the lab range, but we might consider that quite low. I'll talk about the four reasons, the four main reasons it impacts the brain, although zinc is incredibly important throughout the body and especially when it comes to the immune system, the gastrointestinal system. Deficiency is a big issue with cancer, infertility, autoimmunity, problems with growth. What I'd like to do is share with you the number of psychiatric conditions where it's been found to be relatively low. Autism, 98% have low zinc. Antisocial personality disorder, so this would be, I guess culturally this would be more like a sociopathy. 95%. Violent behavior and temper control problems, 78%. Alzheimer's, 72%. And this is important because as we age, we actually become more depleted in zinc. Um, ADHD, 68% have a copper zinc imbalance, so relatively low zinc and relatively high copper. Bipolar disorder, 52%. Schizophrenia, 45%. And clinical depression, 32%. So why would that be? I'm going to highlight four main reasons. And just to briefly summarize them first, zinc is incredibly important when it comes to neurotransmitter functioning. It's incredibly important when it comes to um, protecting us from toxicity and what we call oxidative stress. And it's incredibly important for the immune system and the gastrointestinal system, both of which play very big roles when it comes to brain health. So let's start with how it affects neurotransmitter functioning. So recently in in a paid newsletter, and talked about the NMDA receptor, but in short, know that it's an important receptor in the brain that is, you know, when I'm talking about receptors, these are between, these are at the synapse where neurons communicate with each other. So one neuron will put out neurotransmitters, so chemicals, and it will, they will bind another receptor on the next nerve. And so NMDA is one of those receptors. And what binds it is glutamate. So the NMDA receptor is being looked at in a lot of psychiatric research now. It 
Ketamine is something that will act on the NMDA receptor, so you hear a lot about ketamine. There's a lot of medications in the works that are also um, looking to target the NMDA receptor. NAC is a supplement, and I talk about this in the newsletter. It also will help downregulate activity at that receptor. Individuals who have addiction, OCD tendencies, or a prevalence to getting stuck in terms of a thought or a memory often have high activity at the NMDA receptor. So those of us who are undermethylated can have high activity there. Those who are overmethylated actually can have low activity at that receptor. When there is high activity at that receptor, we can have what's called weak memory extinction. So weak memory extinction, what that looks like in terms of symptoms, is getting stuck. So that could be uh, ruminations, it could be flashbacks with PTSD, it could be uh, obsessional obs obsessions with OCD, it could be cravings and addiction. And so again, that reflects too much activity at that receptor. So while there are things that are being looked at to lower activity there, things like NAC and certain medications, those are all very important. Uh, zinc is something that helps regulate that receptor. So if those other things are being done and zinc is not optimized, um, that could be a missed opportunity. The other way zinc is important in neurotransmitter functioning is that it keeps copper in check. And if our copper gets too high, then we can have low dopamine and high norepinephrine and epinephrine, which is basically adrenaline. And if those are, if our dopamine's low, we can have low motivation, low attention. If our adrenaline is high, that could look like panic, that can look like um, insomnia, it could look like hyperactivity, it could even look like rage and having problems with our temper. And as I mentioned, 68% of individuals with ADHD have been found to have a copper zinc imbalance through the Walsh Research Institute. The third way zinc affects neurotransmitter functioning is through converting B6 to its active form and the active form of B6 is called P5P. So we need that in order to make certain neurotransmitters like dopamine, like GABA, which is calming, and serotonin, which is important for our mood and sleep. So that covers neurotransmitter activity. So now I'm gonna shift over to oxidative stress and how important zinc is as an antioxidant. So we have antioxidants that are basically our protective mechanisms in our body that protects us, protect us against oxidative stress, so toxicity, inflammation, uh, trauma. Anything that's burdening our system, those antioxidants serve to protect us from cell, cellular damage and therefore tissue damage. And when it comes to the brain, that losing our cells or our tissues translates to neurodegeneration. The disorders are things like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ALS. So we need zinc as part of that system um, of antioxidants to protect us. So if it is low, we can have more oxidative stress and more oxidative stress translates to more inflammation and um, more oxidative stress translates to a bigger depletion, a greater depletion of zinc. By itself, zinc is an antioxidant, but it also is needed for the expression of metallothionines. So these are up there, if you've heard of glutathione as a major, major antioxidant in the body. Metallothionines are less w well known, but they are major as well and they are proteins that are at the gut blood barrier and the blood brain barrier and for them to be made and expressed genetically we need zinc so if our zinc is low we're going to have more vulnerabilities at our uh, as far as our gut the barrier between our gastrointestinal tract and our bloodstream and our bloodstream and our brain but keep in mind that we we don't want to have permeability at either of those places that 
toxins can get through. Um, so metallothionines are especially important for keeping metals out, so toxic metals, not these kind of trace metals like zinc, which we need, but toxic metals like lead, mercury, arsenic. So we need zinc there too. So I'll just leave it at that and I'm going to move on to the immune system. Number three, so the immune system is obviously important to our brain. There's a strong connection between our immune system and our central nervous system. And when we are inflamed, our brain can become inflamed. And when we are stressed, our body can become inflamed and our, um, our immune system can get kicked up. So I won't go into the many, many varied ways that zinc helps support the immune system, but one of the ways that I can tell when someone is low in zinc is if they are getting a lot of infections and or if they have a hyperactive immune system. So they may be reacting to things indiscriminately. This could be many foods, um, exposures in their environment, stress, weather changes. So this might look like mast cell activation, which I've talked about before and I can link to in the newsletter. Either one of those, a vulnerability to infection or a, a vulnerability to a exaggerated immune response could point to a zinc deficiency. And in both of those cases, you know, optimizing zinc can, can be really important. So though when you read information about mast cell activation, you won't necessarily see zinc mentioned. I would say that it absolutely should be. Okay, so the fourth and last way that I want to emphasize that zinc impacts the brain is going to be through the gastrointestinal tract. And I've alluded to a number of the reasons why. I mean, if zinc is affecting our immune system and lowering inflammation, that's going to help our gastrointestinal tract not be so inflamed and have so much permeability. If, we don't, if we're not as susceptible to toxins and we have better metallothionine proteins at our gut blood barrier, um, that's going to help our gastrointestinal tract. And if our immune system, too, is better, we're going to be less vulnerable to overgrowth and things like candida um, or um, dysbiosis and microbial imbalances. And zinc is also super important when it comes to our connective tissue with um, how permeable our gastrointestinal tract is going to be for that reason. Zinc's very important for the skin. So if people are dealing with a lot of skin-related issues, just think of all connective tissue inflammation, toxicity, microbial imbalances, these are the areas that impact gut health and that zinc can impact in, in many ways. So obviously I could go on and on about zinc, but I would just end with, if you think about the big picture of brain health, and again, toxicity, inflammation, um, gut health, nutrient imbalances, even structural issues, you know, our connective tissue affects our how well we're able to keep our head on straight, so zinc intersects there too. As far as our early attachment experiences, trauma, um, chronic stress, zinc is hugely important for our stress tolerance. So in the past, I've done more of the big picture and thinking like what are all the areas that are potentially involved when it comes to brain health? Well, I would say that zinc intersects with almost all of those and supports the well-being of all those areas. I hope I've convinced you that it's um, incredibly important and now I'm going to convince you, I hope, that it's not completely benign. We, when we check zinc levels, we're also checking copper levels. And we also check ceruloplasmin. This is a protein that binds copper. It helps us do a calculation so we know how much copper is free and unbound because not only is copper, high copper a problem, someone could have a normal copper and free copper could be high and problematic. 
So we, we check those, and again, we use an optimal range for those um, to decide how much zinc someone needs and also how much, how slowly we may have to go. If somebody has high copper, we wouldn't go too quickly because we could mobilize that copper and make those high copper symptoms worse. If someone's copper is particularly low, there can be some concern about bringing it too low. And so this does require some monitoring. Other reasons that we would want to be careful, certainly people can become toxic on zinc, um, and it can cause a lot of problems by itself if it's at a toxic level. Some people, if they have hyperactive immune systems or a lot of toxicity, their symptoms can get worse if they're started on zinc too quickly. And if zinc is too high, it can actually interfere with the immune system. So there is a balance here. I will end with a little bit of food for the right brain. This is a video that I made a year ago. So it's this season here in Kentucky. If you are wanting to get these in your mailbox, consider subscribing at CourtneySnyderMD.com. I also have information there about my consultations. These consultations I offer nationally and internationally. I look forward to connecting with you in a future episode. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.